everybody, Michelle here from Happy Scrap Girl Designs. Today I'm going to do a designer tips and tricks tutorial on recoloring elements yellow. It's one of the questions that I get asked the most and um, I have a tried and true method that seems to always work for me so I thought I would share it with you. First I'm going to open up this ribbon that I extracted and I actually have this as a link um, if you want to grab it off the Scrap Orchard page or wherever you find this tutorial, there should be a link to it and you can grab it and play along. So we have it opened and the first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate it. So Control J and then I'm going to convert it to black and white. Control Alt Shift B will bring up this box and I just hit enter. And the next thing I'm going to do is click back on the original color layer and I'm going to add a solid color layer in here and I'm going to pick a yellow and I have a couple here in my swatches. The first one I'm going to pick is this light yellow. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to make another layer and you can just backfill it with the color and move it all the way behind. And the reason we have this one is so when we start changing the color of the ribbon, we can actually compare the color of the ribbon to the original color to make sure we're getting the color that is in our swatch palette, that we're matching it correctly. Okay, now we're gonna go back up to the black and white layer. And if you push Control L, it will bring up your levels box. And when we use this, we're going to use it sort of as an overlay. And we want to make it so that it alters the colors below it as little as possible. And to do that, you can take this middle slider and just slide it so that it's underneath the peak here as close as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but pretty close. And then if your end sliders are way away from the ends of the peak, then you can adjust them, but this isn't too far of a distance, so I'm not concerned about that. And click OK. And then we want to change this layer to linear light, and we're going to move this down Let's try it about here to start. We want to be able to see about, change the opacity to about 70% or so. Um, you want to be able to see the lights and darks here, and but you don't want it to be so blown out that it looks strange. And we can adjust it later and play with it a little bit more. Now we want to duplicate this layer again. Control J. And I'm going to change this to soft light, 100%. Okay, now it's sort of looking okay, but not quite right. So what we want to do is go to our color fill layer. And there's a reason that I had you set it up as a fill layer instead of just backfilling an empty layer. If you double click on it and take your slider and move it. Oh, Let me do this first. Cancel that. Take all the layers above your original layer and control G. Oops. Control Alt. <laughs> you want to clip it to your to the original layer, so control Alt G. Okay. Now when we move this, you want to take where the original color is showing and you just want to go over a little bit and click. Just go straight over to the right and click until you get it looking so that the ribbon color is just about the same as the background color. And the reason we had to clip that is because when we were changing the color fill layer, it was distorting the color of the original swatch on the bottom layer. Okay, so if we go here, that's too much. Here's not quite enough. So when you get it so it looks about right, 
and hit OK. All right, and then we can actually hide this layer and take a look at this. And this looks pretty good. Um, sometimes if it's a very light color, you might need to duplicate this one more time, the top layer, and maybe change it to overlay and reduce the opacity on it. And that'll get bring your texture out a little bit more. It looks very solid and very yellow. And in real life, our elements are not one solid color. There's a little bit of um, color variation, um, especially in the highlights and shadows. And so you might want to take a brush and a dark color. This is like a purplish brown color. Um, and a soft round brush. And we'll make that a lot smaller. And just drag that right across here and on its own layer. Reduce the opacity of it by a lot. There we go. And we don't really want it on here, so you can either erase it or I might just take and zoom way in and use my lasso tool and just follow along this edge kind of roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect because that is such a light fade in and just go back out and delete that shadow that I created on top here because you don't really need that and that looks more realistic and then you can also add another layer here and maybe I'm going to use this brush from my grunge brush set number seven it's kind of lines Let's see, oops, did I pass it? There we go, this one right here. And I'm gonna make it smaller. And then if I right click, I can just rotate it and I want it to kind of line up with the the lines of the pattern on the ribbon, the, the grok grow grain lines here. Okay. And then I'm just going to click with that same dark color a little bit. And then I'm going to change the rotation on the brush again so that it lines up going the other direction. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oops, that's too much. There we go. I'm just going to do the same thing on this side of the ribbon. And then I can reduce the opacity on this way down. And it just gives a little bit of variation in the color. It's very, very subtle. And then you can do the same thing and add highlights to it if you'd like. But anyhow, this is a pretty realistic version of a yellow ribbon. and It's fairly easy to get that color. And you can easily change this if we wanted to try for a darker color ribbon. I have a darker yellow here. Let me change this background to this. And... We'll just slide this over until we get the yellow that's pretty close. I know some people do this with a hue and saturation sliders, but I really just don't have good luck getting those just right. It takes me forever and it can be a little bit frustrating. Okay, that's pretty good there. And then I'm probably just going to adjust a little bit here and lower the opacity on the linear light because it's a darker color so we don't quite need it so bright. Okay and then I can turn off the background layer and then adjust the opacity of some of these shadows that I have in here to make it look a little bit more realistic. 
But basically that's a quick and easy way to adjust um, to recolor an element to yellow and you can do this for flowers, for ribbons, for any kind of element that you're looking at. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me at happyscrapgirl at live.com. Thanks so much and have a good day.